Welcome back to Music and Wood. Today we're going to create the guitar neckrest cradle that we talked about in the last video. Behind me here, I've got three different guitars with different style headstocks. That we need to accommodate. We've got the Gibson with a pretty heavy headstock angle. Then we have the Jackson, which also has a, a pretty high headstock angle. And then also a Fender style headstock on the bass guitar we looked at in the first video, where we were creating those larger center hole washers. Now we're going to use to actually fix this bass neck later. So what we need to do is take each one of these guitars and then bring them over to a table along with our blanks that we're going to use to create the neck rest cradle and measure out how much material we'll have to remove. We've got two blanks, one two by four that's seven inches long and then a larger block which is three by three by seven. We'll use both of these as two different neck supports for different styles of headstock. What we now need to do is measure on the larger block here our two higher angle headstocks and determine how much material we'll need to remove to support them. Let's start with the Gibson. We're going to take the guitar, lay it down here on the table, and hold it up to where the headstock would not hit the table. This looks like a good spot. And then we're going to scribe a line under the guitar neck, where we'd like to support the neck so that the headstock and tuning pegs don't hit the table. Next, we've got the Jackson. This one also has that heavy headstock angle. So let's go ahead and see where that one might show up on this block. So hold that about here. Scribe the line. And it looks like we could get away with a lower neck support for the Jackson, but we want to support both the Gibson and the Jackson. Let's go ahead and get the Fender style. All right, so we've got the Fender style base here, and we can see that there's just no need to use this uh, very large block, so we'll put that out of the way. And then take our smaller 2x4, and look at that. It looks like almost exactly where it sits now will do. So we'll scribe the line under it. There's just a small bit, so we'll probably not take too much material off of this 2x4 to support the neck. The material here on our table is a leather-like material that was picked up from a big box store. It was half a yard for under three dollars. It's going to be nice, soft, somewhat grippy, and then we're just going to use an old shirt that I've had lying around as padding under the material. I want to maintain the neck radius on the block for the neck support, so it keeps it steady when we're resting the guitar neck on there. So I'm going to use the bandsaw and then come back with the belt sander with the radius side to clean up a little bit in there. And we'll do that for both of these blocks. We now have two blocks with the profile of the shape scribed into them so that we can cut them out over in the bandsaw. You could really use a number of different methods. You could use a rasp or a file. You could even use a table saw and make some angled cuts and then sand away the inside. You could probably even just do it all on a belt sander and use the rounded over side to sand out the profile. Might take a while and be pretty dusty, but we're gonna finish it off on that and use the bandsaw here to cut out most of it. Let's get our safety glasses and get to cutting. We now have two blocks with the rough shape cut out for the neck. We don't need to sand too much away from here because we're going to pad and cover them, but we're just going to smoothen out the surface and make sure to keep the profile radius of the neck. We're going to go ahead and use our dust mask and safety glasses. All right, looks good. Now we can move on to the next step. So I've cut some padding out of an old shirt and we're going to use that under the covering on the neck rests to just provide a little more cushion for the neck. Next, what we're going to need to do is to measure out some material to cover the blocks. I want to have just a little bit of extra so I can try to trim them flush when I fold them over and glue them down. And then I've got a finishing touch with some uh, nice kind of upholstery nails. We'll see if we can fit around there to make it look nice. 
But let's go ahead and get these sized and cut. We now have one sheet cut out. Let's cut out the next one. Now we've got our next sheet cut out. Let's go ahead and upholster our neck rest cradles. I think I'll use some Loctite spray adhesive to try to adhere the material to our blocks. While using this, we should probably have at least ventilation protection and also maybe some glasses here so we don't get it in our eyes. I'm gonna put some paper down too so that I can overspray. I'll tell you what, that uh, spray adhesive is definitely adhesive-y. It's likely also a good idea to use some gloves when using the spray adhesive so that you'll have an easier time cleaning up when you're done. One done, let's do the other. And there's our next block. For a finishing touch, we're gonna to put on some upholstery nails and these will just give it a little extra bit of finishing quality. So I'm just gonna measure out some different spacing between here and then put those nails in to uh, add on to the blocks. Excellent, we're all set to give our new neck cradles a try. We also have some extra material that we can use to protect the back of the body on our work table. So we'll set that down and test it out. Excellent. That looks well supported. We can see we have clearance here under the headstock from our work table. So we're not gonna damage the headstock or the tuning pegs. Well, I'm liking how this looks. Let's see about our fender style neck cradle. Excellent. Looks like that's working well too. Neck feels well supported and we're again protecting the headstock and tuning pegs from our work table. So there were a few things of that we learned. Learn how to upholster. That's probably helpful if you want something super finished, but I think these finishing nails will take care of the pretty look for now. Uh, also, Sticky adhesive spray is very sticky. I can definitely feel it on my skin here, so probably want to be in a well-ventilated area, making sure that it goes away. You notice we did use the face mask to protect our lungs from breathing in that. And for the material, when you're covering your blocks, make sure that you pull it tight for all the other sides, but you do leave some room on the top for the padding under there so that it can move. Now, it did work out pretty well here, so I still definitely have some play under the material. It's not as tight as on the sides, but if you just left a little more room, then you have a little more pad, but it all worked out in the end. Be sure to come back next time where we're gonna work on the bass guitar neck. We're gonna try to straighten out the relief so that we can have that nicely playable guitar. What we need to do is use these washers from the very first video and add some tension under the truss rod nut. We've just run out of adjustments, so we're gonna to need to add some spacers and that should hopefully give us enough adjustment to straighten out that neck. I'll see you next time on Music and Wood.